Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to Live from America podcast. Uh, we are back after 10 day break. Norm was away, I was away, and we are back. It's a political comedy show with which we discuss. P -p political. No, okay. that's, a, that's a different word. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Fred, he, because he just got here. So basically this show is about Norm correcting my spelling uh, uh, and good... my pronunciation. So, so yeah, that, we, uh, it's, uh, we, a lot of people learn a lot of stuff. Introduce everybody. We, we have serious guests, serious yeah. guests tonight. Introduce. <laughs> they, they are, by the way, he's really funny. Like he is, don't, yeah. Don't, he's don't really, raise the expectations here. He is really. We had a nice discussion. We we had an amazing uh, episode today, and we have great guests. Our guest is uh, Mr. Frick Kaplan, author of The Dark Territory, and he is. Uh, this, I have an autographed copy, by the way. You do? Yes, I do. How come I didn't get one? I was at the at the debate. I'll sign one for you. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, and also, Mr. Clint Watts, the return. Well, 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 of, you have to say I'm I'm also the oh, national security columnist for Slate. Of course you that's, are. That's, that's right. in my contract. This you is have to say that. Yeah. I actually, yeah, uh, and I have a question about that. And I'll tell you something. My mother was not impressed with anybody I've ever met <laughs> until I told her I met Fred Kaplan. Really, she, she, it's truly. Really, it's just uh, this is really raising the expectations. No, no, that right listen, no. This is you know, and I actually have a a, a question about that, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll do it later. And also the return of of Mr. Clint Watts, you know, uh, and he's a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute and a former <laughs> FBI agent and. Um, in the military as well. Army right? dude, yeah. Yes. And of yeah. course, the one and only Mr. Dan Natterman, semi finalist, America Got Talent, That's regular me. comedian here at the Comedy Cellar, best comedy club in the world. Yes, of course. There we go. It and of course, Noam Dorman. And Noam myself. Dorman or Dorman? Dorman. Okay. No, Noam. Noam Dorman in Arabic and myself. So, Noam, go ahead. What are we going to. Well, you know, we've been trying to get Fred on, the, on, on one of our shows for a long time. And Fred wrote this book, uh, Dark Territory, which is all about the, the it starts with <laughs> it starts with um, the 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 movie War Games and how Reagan, Reagan, Reagan was alerted yeah. to this thing. And, and, yeah. and that's and, how we all know that, that there's a cyber threat. It had started when Reagan saw War Games and asked, could this really happen? And they said, right. oh, yeah, yeah, that's when it that's when it began. So he wrote a book about the whole uh, the, the whole history and uh, outlook of cyber cyber world and cyber warfare. And then it occurred to me that Clint was the FBI last couple of times when he was on here before, he kept saying, no, the real threat in the yeah. world is cyber. Yeah. This is what we have to worry about. A few people dying here, a bomb, this is all pales in comparison to the threat. So I thought it'd be interesting to have both guys on together because obviously you're both uh, interested in the same thing. But I have a question for, for Fred before we get into that. What do you think about this travel ban? Yeah, well, it depends which travel ban you're talking about, right? He's supposed to come out with a new one, which leaves Iraq off the list because probably a lot of military people told him, you know, there are currently we're advising soldiers in Iraq now who are Iraqis, who are Muslim, who are saying, why should I be fighting with you if I can't get inside your country just because of who I am? And he goes, oh, yeah, you're right. So, you know, the, the thing about Trump, which is great, <laughs> no, it's not great. I'm, but what, what there is, you see, like the other day, he said, "Boy, this healthcare thing. Nobody knew that it could be so complicated." Well, in fact, everybody knew that it was complicated. You were, in fact, told that it was, he's the only one. So what he, what he was, we're going to be spending the next four years with him discovering how complicated <laughs> the world everything is. Was. Remember, you, the thing he he used to be generally believes, you know, the world is all fucked up because. We're led by stupid people. We're led by stupid people. You know, he thinks that everything is like making a real estate transaction in New York City where you just screw somebody and you've already got a marketplace already set up that you can exploit. You know, the world is a, is a different place. And part of it is that there are some problems that are just intractable. And a lot of these people working it are smart, but we don't control things the way to the degree that we did when it was just us versus the Russians and most countries in between had to side with one or the other. So you could get a lot of leverage from that. Now they can go off and do whatever they want. So the, the notion of intractable problems is hard for Americans to accept. To, it's it doesn't, hard to it's, not, it's, yeah. not, it's not in us. To, no, a tough sales pitch. Can do, can do. Well, I think that's probably human nature in general. No, especially I haven't America. lived uh, elsewhere, yeah. but. Uh, we don't like long run solutions. Yeah, if if we can if it doesn't fit in inside one quarter, we don't push it to the next. So if you can't sell it quick, it's 
it's not going to endure one or two years. So, so I have this little pet issue. I don't know if it's interesting to you guys, but I just had a conversation with this woman from the ACLU about it, which is that there's an expression of law. I can never get it. How, what is it? Bad facts make good facts make bad law or something like that. I feel like Trump is the, the good facts, which are going to make some really bad law <laughs> in the sense that even just dealing with the segment of the uh, population who have never even applied for a visa, have never come in here, that basically if anybody has no constitutional rights, that group, can we really have a judge deciding whether a president has the authority to take actions in our national security? Are we going to depose CIA agents? Are we going to have to tell the judge what uh, intelligence, Im- embedded intelligence has found out what cyber, what, what cyber surveillance yeah. has found out and then have a judge who is not elected, has no expertise, is not even accountable, him make the final. Well, a, or- judge, a judge can go into it's in camera. They yeah. can go, OK, I want to see when we'll go into a specially compartmented right. facility where we can discuss classified information. It right. can be, uh, you know, no. but you're right. The president does is given in the Constitution a lot of latitude. For these kinds of questions but then that creates you know i mean right now tourism is down in the united states by something like seven percent this year seven percent yeah oh this God. city thrives mm-hmm. on tourism and there are a lot of people you know just said well i i don't i don't not even whether they're muslims or not just like this doesn't seem like a very welcoming place i mean if, if anybody coming back into jfk or newark from outside of the country and seeing how I mean, people who aren't in the blue passport line are treated yeah it's, this it's, this time of year usually uh, the princes from saudi arabia will come <laughs> and each one of them is like have like 300 people <laughs> and they spend so much they all went to indonesia and malaysia this year you know because they don't want to you know he they, knows some of these people but the saudis are uh, not on the list of uh, no, yeah but not, you but that point is, is you want you want it to yeah. be treated there are trump hotels there you see. yeah the, you want the vibe the vibe yeah you want so, to be treated like you 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 know so, so just, just to just to finish my point then i'll then i will totally drop it but i feel like we're getting to a situation where okay it's in camera and it's confidential but at some point assuming there's something somebody's gonna say listen the, the my cia head and believes this, and we have the following conversations that we recorded. But does and, he? But and, he go ahead, and, and then, and then a judge is going to say, "No, I don't but, think that's." But does enough. he believe that? Does the CIA have information about everybody from this country? No, no. of course not. Yeah, well, that's what this is about. Right. You know, there's also this assumption: tens of thousands of people are streaming across. It doesn't work. Though. It takes for for a, for a, a refugee coming here. It's a two-year process, going through twenty stages and most of them drop are, are eliminated in the first two stages of this now is this a perfect process probably not there isn't been a single terrorist incident in this country from anybody who comes from any of those seven countries by the way mm-hmm. it, it doesn't mean that there never will be no but uh no you're jumping to the merits and i'm and i'm focusing on the authority the that's authority what... well, well that's what we'll soon discover there i mean it disturbs me if he loses laws. the authority. I think we'll, we'll live to regret that. Just like I was always against the fact that a sitting president can be sued for sexual harassment. I always felt that no, was no, a bad idea. No, no, that wasn't what it was. He, he was uh, being had for, for lying to a grand jury. Remember, that's what it was. No, he sued for sexual harassment. He sued. And yeah. then he lied about it. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I said, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, and remember, the, the Supreme Court ruled then that, well, he had said, no, I can't do this. I don't have time. And they said, oh, yeah, it'll just take a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, they just, overruled right. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, it'll be okay if, if the judge starts to say, well, now every time we're going to drone somebody are they gonna start running it by a judge and a judge deciding whether in no, his that's judgment not, but that's nobody's saying that that's nobody, what'll nobody. happen yeah, no it hasn't occurred. you know what and judges okay if it does happen on on issues that are purely national security judges almost always defer uh this one deals with a couple of issues that are in conflict with each other and there isn't much of a of a case i'm not a lawyer but there isn't much of case law on this, that, that's no, one no thing that, uh, that mm. that's a problem here. So he's about to come out with a new order. And by the way, this shows just how much of an emergency it is. He was going to come out with this new order tomorrow, but no, he wants to bask in the glow from his speech the other night for a few days longer. <laughs> so it's going it to it's, it's come out on Friday <laughs> instead. With, you know, what, what the hell kind of emergency is this? And by the way, that'll hurt his case before a judge because it's all about we need these emergency powers. Well, then why you, you couldn't come uh, on, on third Wednesday? You had to come on Friday because you want two more days of headlines about your Bacacta speech, you know. I, I suppose you're right. I mean, I'm, go ahead. Go. That was that was a good speech. 
You thought it was a good speech? No. <laughs> I thought, I thought I, it was a good I, 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 no, thought, I didn't think it was a good speech. No, I, I see. We, uh, great minds think alike. I, 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 Why did I, you th- what did you think was I good I suggest that nothing that could have come out of his mouth would get you to say he thought it was a good speech. No, that's not true. When he first, his first words, his first words, he said, this is Black History Month, civil liberties, we have to condemn all this. And I'm thinking, Jesus, what's going on here? And then there had been reports earlier in the day that he told a lunch of, of anchors yeah. that he's going to step back on the immigration thing. Maybe we need to create a path toward legal citizens. This is getting too cantankerous. And then, of course, he was talked out of it. That was nowhere in the speech. So, no, when he first started, I'm thinking, geez, where is this, where is this going? This could be interesting. Was and he th- talking about saying that in the speech about yes, the legal path? it wasn't in the speech. He goes, I think I'm going to put that in the speech. And he tells his aide, go back and, and change that. And then they go back and, and Brannon and Miller say, no, we can't do and that. And Sessions. <laughs> we can't do that. Yeah, I think they will eventually do that. I, I always felt that uh, this is, it's all upside down because the people who really n- want – and and depend on the immigrants, legal and illegal, in this country are the Republicans, business owners, mm-hmm. people who have nannies, people who have childcare, gardens, whatever it is, Rest, and restaurant and comedy club uh, owners. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I don't I don't have any illegal immigrants working for me. I haven't years ago. I had, but um, do you don't you think that that I believe it depresses wages? Um, I mean, of course it, and it, it and it's it's ironic that the left almost naively is so behind this when I really do believe they're the ones who suffer from it. And I think in the end, when the when the rubber hits the road, it will be the Republicans and the people with money who will insist that the immigrants stay and insist that there's a legal path because everything they have depends on it. They're not going to start taking care of their own gardens. What, now, here's a question. Start hiring I, nannies from Ca- California <laughs> shuts there's down. A question I, there's yeah. a question yeah. I had uh, uh, with regard to this. Uh, it was j- just today at a, a convenience store. Um, here in Manhattan, buying a, a candy bar. Um, <laughs> what kind of candy bar? Well, whatever. But we talk. Oftentimes, we talk. We talk about what white people are not willing. What Americans are not willing to do. Yeah. Can Americans run a decent convenience store? <laughs> I mean, if my, wanna, my grandparents ran a, 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 well, those a candy were, those store. Were, they, they those were Jews. It's when the Jews ran stores. <laughs> but we got rid of these immigrants, and you want a beef jerky at three in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, but Kelly isn't going to be down there. What is it about the white man that just can't seem to get it together with a convenience store? <laughs> <laughs> they can only do it if it's a truck stop. Usually. <laughs> He's right. Yeah. No, and actually, when you go in other parts of the country, it is a lot of well, white I, people I, doing these things. Yeah, and where I'm from, it's all truck stops. No, because you go and even to Alabama. Slow, it, it's slow labor, but it gets You done. go to Alabama, <laughs> you go to the Red Roof Inn. How are you today? I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it's, they're down there, too. Doing the they're stuff. everywhere. You know they what are, I mean? The Indians, they I mean, they're, they're doing co- hotels even in places you would like, what are they doing here? But, well, it depends if they also deal meth on the side, <laughs> which is yeah. most truck stops. So if it's a dual no, I'm industry. talking about Red Roof. What's thing? going on yeah. in the white? Yeah, so yeah, actually, so if a white guy's there, it shows that something's going on in the right. back room. There's is usually a secondary saying? business line that's yeah. going on. Uh, there right, are so. some jobs that only, you know, immigrants, not only immigrants, but immigrants are better. Like, for example, I coach soccer, you know. So you could be in that, like, in the like what like Wisconsin and a redneck will come to you but he knows you know soccer because you know so they'd be like See, until fifteen years him. ago we didn't do soccer. <laughs> I know when I grew up nobody played soccer. You, you still don't soccer. do soccer. But anyway <laughs> <laughs> so I mean there is some jobs that you know that immigrants are needed, you know, and it, it can be switched. You don't want to be, you know um well, to, to what extent is is are we just not encouraging like this notion of well, you know, we have uh doctors that come from overseas and and, uh, you know, uh, are we writing off um, middle America and just saying, well, they're not capable of becoming doctors and they're not capable of doing these things. So we need these smart people coming from overseas. No, I think I, I mean, I'm from Missouri. That's where I grew up. And so I think there's lots of people I grew up with that do those jobs. But what you tend to have is flight. You know, they might come from those places. They might learn their trade or whatever, but they go where the pay is higher. And so. Oftentimes you see them move to urban centers or they move out of the Midwest or South or whatever it might be. But there's even some reverse. I mean, you could look at Atlanta or places in Texas that are booming, you know, city areas and they'll have massive uh, growth. Uh, I just know from my army uh, buddies and folks I went to West Point with, you know, they got out of the army, they went and got advanced degrees or whatever, and they've lived in the South and the Midwest. But no one goes back to where they really came from. No one's going back to trump towns you know that are the red states the red counties throughout the midwest and the south you're not going to go back there because there's not much that's offered to you and so it's it's not that it's uh 
uh, wrong or down, you know, to go back to those places. But what are you going to do? I, for example, if I was to go back to Missouri, I was in the Army, I was in the FBI, I was in national security fields, I work in cyber. It's bad motherfucker. There's about <laughs> zero jobs where I came from in those fields. His and, hands are registered as a deadly weapon, too, by the way. That's right. Mostly to myself. If I, I, I have a little out but of the, practice. It was it David Brooks but, recently talked about a dying white America? He wrote an article. He's talking, he's talking about himself. Versus, <laughs> versus a place like Houston. So the implication yeah. was is that we need immigrants because um, the white people are dying. and, and Yes. But look at a place like Atlanta. I mean, but I, but but is is that the right attitude? It should it be white people are dying. Let's mobilize so that Mid America doesn't die. And, and no, I, we, we're just we're just having fewer and fewer children. Americans, native born Americans. This is a problem in the entire Western world. I think America has it the least. Right? We have the we're not reproducing, so we don't have young people to do the labor to support the old people. And when they've so tr- that yeah, we need but, the but, exactly uh, okay, right. when okay. they've tried job programs like in Colorado for construction, North Carolina for agriculture, and these places where they're trying to build jobs, you know, in these poor white rural American places, they can't get people to fill the jobs, and and you can even see that in California. And so I don't see. I I think the one thing that's a misconception in the U.S. right now is the difference between urban uh, African-American poor and rural white poor are highly similar. I, I think there's a lot of dynamics that are similar in terms of opportunities. Where are you going to move into uh, the economy? You can't move from where you're at, you know, where the support system's at. So this is like, you know, the Saturday Night Live Black Jeopardy, right? I mean, mm-hmm. there's... It's uh, great, it's great. That was one of the great social political commentaries of, of the entire year, I thought. Well, all the Black Jeopardies are great, but you're talking about the one with Tom the Hanks. One, yeah, the one with Tom Hanks. <laughs> well, well, I don't remember that. What, what, any, you remember any? Well, the, 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 the black contestants and yeah. Tom Hanks, who's this guy talking like this, wearing a Make America Great, right. they agree on everything. He gets all the answers <laughs> yeah. right. You know, the, they have so much in common, but... Yeah, you know, where is the political leader to, to bring all of those factions together? I, I can't think of one. Well, yeah, if, you know, I think Barack force. Obama, he was one. He was one. Who tried. I, I think that from, from my point of view, I've talked about this before. I, the What worries me, and it maybe shouldn't, but it does, is factionalism. Is the all the things which are contributing to the end of a social fabric in this country. It really scares me. And immigration is part of it. Because I and I and I hire them, and I know so many immigrants come here now with a actually a truly negative attitude about the United States of America. It's like they're coming to the oppressor country to to make some money and never send my kids to, to fight. And and as opposed to my parents' generation, and I, you know, who were like the wrapped themselves in the American flag from the day they got here. Thank God for but America. There are a lot of modern immigrants who are, who are like that as well. Uh, but there, but of course there are. There's, of course know. there are. But there's a lot who aren't, and we never had that before. Well, you're, what you're saying is that they come here and they don't want to cast off. I mean, my grandparents, maybe your parents, I don't know. Yeah, they left Russia, and it's like, that's it. That's we're right. done with that. God, bless, I'm a we're Yankee. Not, <laughs> we're not sending back money. We're not doing anything. Yeah. Whereas immigrants now, they go back and forth. They, they still keep, some of them even keep the same language. So if that's what you're talking about, that is a different thing. Yes, it is. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's dangerous. It's, and, but look, I, you know, you and I, you know, a few generations ago, we were not considered white, if you know what I mean. Well, you I. No, we were not considered white, and Irish people weren't considered white. There, there is this assimilation over time anyway. But on the factionalism, it goes beyond this. You know, if you look at some of these opinion polls, you know, with one, like, you know, is Trump doing a good job? You know, white, uneducated men, 90% think he's doing a great job. Educated white women, 10%. You know, it, they're, they're mirror images of each other. And I remember I was talking with Sean Wilentz, who you ought to have on the show sometime. He lives you. in New York. But he just he wrote a book recently about factionalism in American history. So uh, about six months ago or so, the election was just sprucing up and said, well, how would you view what's going on now from a historical perspective? And he goes, oh, what, what, what's going on now isn't partisanship. I mean, this is more like civil war. In fact, we haven't seen this kind of rancor and just disgusting rhetoric and partisanship since the election of 1858. Which so, for you foreigners yeah. out there, that, Actually, that was two years before yeah. the Civil War. Colin Coyne so, said the exact same thing. I well, feel that yeah. way. Well, maybe it's time we had it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, but back then it was well, just it was, well, it was hey, By the way, let me tell you, it's not going to do well. <laughs> yeah. New York. 
because I, you guys can't shoot and That's you don't got thing, guns. And you, uh, yeah, you know, it's when, when a, Susan Sarandon said, "Oh, I, I want to elect Trump so I can accelerate the revolution," yeah, people well, said, "Well, you know what? In a revolution, when this, I, I think I put my no. money on the guys with the guns." You know, but yeah. I, so I don't lose. Well, I don't mean have it out physically, but this is brewing for a long time. And, you know, we need, we need to figure it out as Americans well, what is who we mean? are. Through what media? Do we, we now, nobody even listens or reads the same for, for, things if, if a substantial portion of the American public does not want immigrants or wants far less immigrants and they're really adamant about it, I say, hey, so, you know, it's not going to kill us not to have immigrants. Yeah, Obama it, deported yeah. a lot of people. I mean, it did. You know, uh, if that's what it takes to keep the peace in the house. But that's, but that's, I don't think that's what's really going on. That, yeah. Most people that, who are against, they don't even know any immigrants, no. you know, right. that's the thing. Hello. Right? That's not the real issue. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> right, <laughs> so right. so what's, what's the real issue? Why are people so furious? I don't, I don't you know, I'm, I, 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 I think the big question is how can you be white American have so much and be so unhappy? I mean, that's the, <laughs> the interesting point when I look back, you know, where I, came from in Missouri and you know I was in the army I was in the south and I traveled all overseas and stuff and so you go to Africa and you're like okay uh, these guys have nothing and yet mm-hmm. they seem to be more happy than a lot of the people <laughs> right. I grew up They're with. Well, part of it is very whether going, it's whether you're going up or down. That's right. right. And, you know like uh, there's a historian it's... Crane Britton talked about mm-hmm. the revolution of rising expectations. Well, maybe there's also a revolution or a revolt of lowering expectations. Yeah. So I, you know, it's my, perceptions. My, Absolutely. My, my dad had his union job not my dad, but you know, whoever had a, had a union job and he worked at the factory for 30 years and now it's closed or, you know, whatever, whatever. I mean, this is happening. And, 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 you know, look, let's face it. There, there are a lot of people who, who, you know, like these liberals, they don't care about me. They just carry, care about, you know, whether a certain species of bird survives or, or whether gays can get married. I don't feel part of this anymore. And, and you know, I can understand that that's, and, and, you know, the, 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 the bi-coastal, elite which controls the culture i mean there's something to you know we sit around talking about you know john stewart and the sopranos or whatever you know a few million people watch these shows i mean most people in america don't have any idea what you're talking about yet this is what's covered in the culture so if you're out there and you don't you don't even have cable you're saying i don't know what these people are talking about there's 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 a zillion and also america isn't as strong as it used to be and there are a lot of reasons for that but you can you can scapegoat any number of... Uh, well, we're not as relatively... Yeah, strong, relatively, right? yeah. yeah. See, another yeah. thing to Noam's point is like about immigrants, the different like when immigrants now, they don't feel very American. I don't think they have the opportunity that you guys had. Like when you're an immigrant now, there's certain jobs that you're going to do. There's a certain level that you're going to reach. Before, it was really open. Like you can... It was really the land of opportunity. You can do whatever you want. You know, you can... It, but now it just it's, you're very limited. That's why they don't let, feel. Let me ask you a question. You're, 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 I mean, don't compare me. I'm successful, no, no. but I'm you're you're, you're a I'm Muslim. wildly successful. You're, you're a know. Muslim. <laughs> Relatively. Wildly successful. You're Muslim, and you're aware of the diversity of opinion in the Muslim, particularly particularly the Arabic world. Yeah. Is is there a a large number of people who come here from the Arabic world who have a low opinion? of America's values, of America's tolerance, of gay marriage, and, and all the things which we take pride in as Americans. Do they come here looking down on us? Or do they come here saying, I love this country, I love what it stands for, this is what, I want my children to be American. It, it doesn't matter what these, they feel, when they come here, they respect the law, and they do it, they, they wanna live. They're they want, they respect the law. Yeah, no, I, I understand, but- That's what's in their heart. My point is like, whatever is their heart, they're not gonna do it or show it or or, you know, but, yeah, they 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 cannot accept like uh, being gay back home, for example. But here they're fine. They can, you know, they drive cab and gay guys. Are, uh, you know, no you go problem. out to Queens. You go yeah. out to Queens. There's an area, you know, if you take the number seven train, you can see the world. You uh-huh. know, it's, yeah. Each stop is like a different country. So, and there are restaurants. Like I remember, I saw a restaurant one. It said, India, Pakistani, Bangladesh food. Like the place was owned uh-huh. by an Indian, a Pakistani, or a Bangladeshi who would probably would be fighting with each other Absolutely. when they were at home, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. They come here, they band together. Absolutely. To beat up all the white people. No, I, hey, I don't know. I'm, I'm very corny about this. I like I know that if you put on some, you know, patriotic old 1940s movie about Abraham Lincoln, or it would bring tears to my father's eyes. And I think that is important for a nation that has no nationality, has no blood. No, you cannot look at anybody's DNA and know they're American. All we had was that. 
Shared and I just see, yeah, and, and, I, and I just see this dissipating in every way. I, my theory has been for a while that the Jefferson Memorial, fifty years, will no. I mean, he owned slaves, right? We we don't even attempt to judge people in their in their own time anymore. We're mm-hmm. ashamed of every aspect of our history, and we're bringing in immigrants from countries who share that view, and it's going to linger just like racism lingers in the South. I believe these attitudes are going to linger among, yep. and. You know, and, and I'm worried about it, and I don't, and I don't consider myself a bigot, but I, but I, but I. But I think you're right that it, there needs to be, and I don't know, you know, there needs to be a person or a force that can have some kind of even superficially unifying thing. And I don't, I don't, I don't see it on the horizon. Well, we've heard. I, from I, mean, I mean, I think Obama could have been, but yeah. you know, one thing that happened with Obama, the Republicans on day one, Mitch McConnell, they get together and they say. We will not let him pass a single piece of legislation. Our goal here is to make this guy a one-term president. Uh, And he passed quite a lot anyway, but they were resistant from the get-go. And they rallied. They took advantage of this. You know, they they lassoed on to this Tea Party movement. And now they've got the rope around their necks. They've they've been, they're becoming enslaved by themselves. There were a handful of people who I think could have been a bridge, like John McCain. And in fact, Obama reached out to McCain early on, remember? The whole idea of markets in the health care bill, that was a McCain idea. And he acknowledged him in the State of the Union address, but McCain was just, just a fucking grumpy old man and didn't want to have any part of it. <laughs> but, there, but I think a lot of it is, a lot of what's going on is, yes, there are things going on, and there are certain politicians that exploit it for their own. Look at Trump. I mean... I mean, I don't know. Maybe I just don't read the right newspapers, but I, there weren't. I don't remember reading about people going into a bar in Olathe, Kansas, and shooting a couple of Indians because he thought they were Iranians. I, I haven't read anything about about you know stones being uh, uh, desecrated in Jewish cemeteries in uh, Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, that that, that, that I, you know? I, mean, I mean, anti-Semitism has been pretty but, running pretty hot for a while now. I mean, I don't know if this, this little... kind of stuff. I don't know, but I mean, I think he is permitting. He is he is creating a rhetoric that gives I mean he's not endorsing it but he has allowed people to come out from under the rocks and 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 show their faces whereas before there was kind of a shame you know uh, you know for you know you can make jokes about a lot of things but not about being a racist well now you you people come he, they're coming out they're he's coming empowered out again. a lot of angry people to speak but mm-hmm. I also don't think Trump is the agent behind all of these things. Not I don't think on it. any given day, Trump exactly knows what he believes in or what he's going to say. I, I, I think he's switched and pivoted on so many issues. Mm-hmm. And there's one thing above all that matters to Trump. Did I win by the most? Am I the <laughs> best? Uh, does everybody like me? Uh, am I going to be the greatest? And he even made the one faux pas <clears throat> last night in his speech, which was off script and no one wrote for him. You can always tell when he's He's reading it on yeah. script because it sounds like a bedroom story he's reading to his kid where he start he talks real slow and he has complete sentences which you don't normally expect and <laughs> and you're confused but then he stopped and after the navy seal moment which was such a great moment oh, yeah. and he knew it was such a great moment he said the dumbest thing ever which is I think you know he's looking down right now and he knows he set a record and you're like no you think you might have set a record for the longest applause now in the speech. And it was not about you, Donald Trump. It was about this seal that died on a mission. And he, he that was the one time he broke script and he wasn't reading off the teleprompter. And so to me, every time I hear Trump say something or do something, earlier in the day he laid blame for the Yemen raid on his generals, which is the biggest no-no you do as a commander-in-chief. If you want to really piss off military people, you just don't do that. And so you see him when he goes off script there, become himself, and then veer back on. And no matter what it is, it is, am I the best? Do people like me? Am I the greatest? And so I think there are some positives. The the negatives are he's got a wing of ideologues inside his inner administration there that are nut jobs. And they push a lot of executive orders. They don't really know what they're doing, and, and they're just sort of zealots. But he has brought on a series of generals, for example, that I have high confidence in. McMaster— Fred does, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, McMaster, you know, was an instructor at West Point when I was a cadet and and is a great military leader. In history. Yeah, and, you know, he was a captain major. You know, he showed up as a military <laughs> history instructor. When I was a cadet, we were all ecstatic to see him there. He won the biggest battle in the history of— 
you know, Desert Storm and then went on to great well, things. Encounter, 73 Eastings. It's the most deadly battle in tank warfare ever. I mean, he destroyed essentially an uh, Iraqi army division like a, in about probably six to seven minutes. Well, not a division. It was like a battalion, but it was with a company. Well, I thought it was so an Iraqi army brigade. It was, it was a Republican, Republican guard. guard he's, a bad, was a he's a bad motherfucker. He's a bad, and, yeah. But then he also goes to like Tal Afar in the, in, the, in, the, in the Iraq war and controls the place by reaching out to people, forming alliances. I mean, classic counterinsurgency stuff. And he's a very smart guy. And he wrote a book. He's famous for writing a book. It was his dissertation about how the the Joint Chiefs of Staff screwed up in Vietnam by not delivering honest military opinion to the president. So everybody is now counting on H.R. McMaster. Can I tell use Trump? Can I use your respect truth. for the generals to jump to another subject? What I want to ask that I want to ask you about, which is the Trump Russia connection. Mm -hmm. And you know, <laughs> looking looking at it from one direction, you know, you <clears throat> see all these fuzzy things and coincidences, and you wonder about this and wonder about that. Looking. In the opposite direction, I say to myself, he's got Mattis there. He's got this guy, McMaster. Are these guys going to roll over and keep his secret about some obsequious relationship with Russia? They might not know it. They don't necessarily know it. Well, but they're going to be in that room discussing, and they're going to sniff it pretty strongly if, it, if well, it's I really think, controlling. I think they're him. sniffing quite a lot already, actually. Well, yeah. um, that's my question. Would they not resign or I that's why I, I tend to think that there's in the end is really nothing really there only because people would have to know about it and and would and these are patriots these are people that had their well, whole but, but lives Mattis wouldn't necessarily know about what kind of financial arrangements no but Trump they would know has. that the, the 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 decisions that he was making mm, couldn't know. be explained by anything but, but you're the FBI guy you, there's you four scenarios that. and yeah. so you know I I dumped uh you know my uh study of Russian influence for Trump it took three years and, you know, we dumped it two days before the election. And so there's four scenarios on the best case scenario. Uh, Trump is just a guy who believes everything that Putin believes and he believes in uh, Putin's policies. That doesn't work because he changes his stance all the time. If you go back on Trump, he's been so pro Clinton, you know, at points. It doesn't make any sense on the that's one. Number two on the far and is Number the Manchurian four. candidate, which is mm -hmm. he is Putin's man, specially selected. He's under the command of Putin and he's going around running the government. Uh, the dossier that came out would tell you that the Russians got nervous because they thought he was acting so erratic. They were afraid to even support him. And that if they were really controlling Trump today, they would choose him being less erratic and, and more meantime, deliberate. How about a nice game of solitaire? Yeah, but it, <laughs> in between are, are two scenarios that are more viable and that people should be looking at. Yeah. So to that near left would be useful idiot, which is Trump is a guy they picked early on who supports a lot of Putin positions, is easily manipulated, doesn't have a strong handle on national security. And so you surround him with a series of agents, which you'd call fellow travelers, useful idiots. It's just that Russian active measures program. And you surround him with it and you say, I've got a campaign manager, Paul Manafort, who's highly influential. I paid him before and he will support a line. I got a guy named Carter Page that goes back and forth. I've compromised General Flynn and I've flown him over here and paid him through RT. And so they are going to push a Russian position inside on Trump. I think, other, I think Flynn is compromised. Yeah, I do too. I get that I feeling. Also, old... Flynn is pissed. So if criminal charges come against Flynn... Lying to the FBI, it's felony. They want to yeah, push it. Right. Uh, he's the kind of guy who would flip. Yeah, that's why I don't. I don't there's, think Trump is dirty on this. There's I'm, one other one, no, which I mean, is it, the it, he could flip for he's, a good deal. Which is why Trump wouldn't have fired him. Which is he's completely yeah. compromised. You heard that about three weeks ago when the who is? Uh, Trump? Trump, which the urinating on a bed. You would call it. Who piss, hasn't done that? Piss gate. <laughs> and you, here's the problem <laughs> with that. A, you can't compromise a, a guy who just said I grab him by the pussy with a sexual talk. And yeah. even if the Russians did that, there's probably sitting there going, "Can you believe this guy just said grab him by the pussy?" Because like this video is worthless now. The Americans <laughs> still voted for him. We yeah. can't even get. Yeah. So that comes down to financial, which is why we should have an investigation. If they can't prove the financial angle, then he's not compromised. He's not the Manchurian candidate. He is the useful idiot. He was surrounded by people that are pro-Russian operatives. And Trump is known to take on uh, allies and advisors all the time who help him get elected or move on in business. And then we'll jettison them just okay. as fast. Another question. for How many people would you say have seen Trump's tax return? Well, his Dozens. accountant, 
His no, account. No. It doesn't have to be dozens. Uh, the, the, oh, the, a number of people. How many people? In, how many people have seen your tax return? I'm not Donald Trump. No, it doesn't yeah. matter though. I would say 25 to 50. 25 to 50. Many? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you take in his own internal accountants, you take in his side, and then you take in the IRS but side. But do they? But they don't see every section of the. Of the uh, tax you know, on the IRS to run an audit on uh, Trump's very complex thing. You're talking about one to two dozen oh, the investigators. IRS. Okay. Well, you know, you but, take a, so, uh, even an audit firm. Uh, so, 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 yeah. so, so my my. Point point is that in a in a in a world where this guy can't even keep his inner circle from leaking things what are the odds that there's something in his tax return which shows that trump is compromised by russia and one of these 25 to 50 people doesn't doesn't well, the irs say it i, I just anybody, feel it, it has would, anybody ever I'll leaked anything out of the irs yeah the new york times uh, no, published no, trump's no, tax no, return. somebody sent him one page which the the theory is that that was uh, old, marla too. maples because it was her tax return too she signed ah, it ah yeah, yeah. very good yeah. Never so, hell hath no fury yeah, scorn yeah, woman yeah, yeah you yeah. gotta watch that uh, but uh look i don't know if there's everything is there there's anything so things, hot about a tax there are return some before. things that don't leak for example the grand jury testimony from nixon never leaked right we still don't know what's in but there. but if it's really hot if 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 in there is evidence that our president is compromised by russia yeah yeah would 25 to 50 people here would not one of them say it's you're my exactly duty right I here's where the news media misses it too if the russians were to do that to direct payments to him directly without a series of shell games or That's going through adversaries you're talking about an act of war this is a, the manchurian <laughs> candidate is an act of war even the compromise scenario is an act of war and he might be compromised, but they would use that instead to shape foreign policy. Like Trump does something they don't want to do. Now they do a dump on him to sort of like balance it out. With the useful idiot scenario, he's got three or four advisors. It sounds like they were being investigated already. Uh, Manafort was fired suddenly in the summer. Carter Page has been named. General Flynn, we know all of his connections. You pay the intermediaries to influence Trump. Trump isn't aware necessarily overtly of what's going on, but because he's so susceptible to anything that will bring him a victory, he'll pursue those paths. And, and so there's no tangible and, 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 link. Let, between me, the let two. me do one more Please. connection. Okay. When the Russians hacked into the DNC, we now know they also hacked into the RNC and into Trump's campaign. Just they never provided those documents to WikiLeaks. They've got them, though. I, I thought they, they weren't able to get no, in. No, they got in. In fact, that's one reason why. That was, that's what led uh, the director of national intelligence to think something was funny going on here because they, they got information that the Russians did hack into the Republicans, too. Okay. So they've got into all of this stuff. It's not rocket science, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they've got all these documents. They just didn't let them out. What's in those documents? It's a delicious, and and, yeah. and if he doesn't, uh, well, there was nothing much. In, there was nothing much in the DNC documents. Well, it was enough to get Hillary it's Clinton. It's all perception. Uh, it was enough to get her. Uh, you know, it was it was Podesta saying she has no value. She has no belief in anything. I'm just saying. I, yeah, I don't think. Is there stuff in there? And this is a question, not yes. a statement. That if if Trump doesn't get with it on sanctions or whatever. Uh, that they're going to provide a few things it to is. WikiLeaks and uh, we'll the see Republican what hacks or any data they have on the Republicans is now held in reserve. So if you remember, they set it. Up, the Russians set it up both ways. You know, we were tracking this on RT, Sputnik News, the overt outlets. We tracked seven thousand accounts. You know, on social media over three years. So they're holding that in reserve. Whenever they see uh, an issue where they think Trump is going to lose, they would push several themes. One, the election is hacked. If you remember October, that election's hacked, rigged. election's hacked, election's rigged. Trump would repeat that because if he loses, then he can undermine the mandate of Clinton and they have a vector to weaken her. But now that Trump has won, if you have anything on the Republicans, you hold it like an information missile. You wait till Trump does something that you don't want to do. Or the Republicans, McCain, Lindsey Graham, a lot of these guys start to fight you, fight against Russia, and they say, oh, yeah, you know what? The Republicans didn't support Trump either. This is, this, this is what I think. Now, then I have another question. Yeah. I they think, play both sides. I think that there is sanctions against Russia in the world of high-level business and fine, uh, it's even uh, It's impossible to not end up dealing with Russian billionaires. I was in Russia, uh, when was it, two months ago? We wound up doing a gig for a Russian billionaire. And... Clearly, they want they're 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 struggling under these sanctions, and they're looking to get out from under them. So they start having Russian donating to Trump and getting access to Trump in the way that everybody who has any kind of political agenda tries to legally bribe these. Uh, and I don't and I, and that I can believe, but that Trump has some loyalty 
to Russia. You know, I believe it if I see it, but I have to see some of it. Now, now here's my next mm-hmm. question. Yeah. Fred Kaplan, mm-hmm. what scenario of something terrible happening in the world most keeps you up at night after all your study of the cyber world? Well, actually, I have no trouble sleeping. <laughs> but that is, I've always, like, my idea of, of staying up at night is like 10 minutes. You know, yeah. then what's going on? Then I'm, I'm, out, I'm out. But uh, let, let, let's take your question as a metaphor. Okay. Um, it's like when somebody asked Woody Allen, who, who would you like to have dinner with? What three people from history would you say? You said, well, you know, the truth is I don't like to eating with anybody. You know, so. <laughs> That's pretty good, Fred. I mean, good bad, Woody Allen. Bad. Very good. So, so anyway, so what keeps me up? Um, <laughs> well, look, I mean, you know, we were talking about yeah. cyber and so forth. At least so far, n- not many people have been killed with cyber. I mean, I think, you know... Some yeah, some crazy guy with a nuclear weapon is still is still the big one, right? I mean, I it, my most pessimistic the most pessimistic part of me. Sometimes I'm walking, you know, around the Broadway district or something, and I'm thinking, why isn't somebody blowing up this place right now? I mean, it's not that difficult. I think that every time I get in a subway, okay, you're yeah. in a subway. <clears throat> the old working. And, no, actually, <laughs> they're, they're working at the old <laughs> <They're working. laughs> work It is it is more difficult right. than it used to be. I mean, since Oklahoma City and September 11th, it, it's harder to actually go out and buy explosive materials. You used to be able to go to, you know, Lowe's or something and buy a few things and put it together in your bag. You can't do that anymore. So part of it is that it's harder. Part of it is that these things like air checks and things like that, they, they've they actually done done some work. Part of it is not that many people really want to blow us up. On the other hand, all it takes is a few, right? So that that's my uh, I, I'm kind of it, it both reflects my my pessimism, but also leads to a more ultimate optimism that I look around and and see that this shit isn't just happening all the time. It, it's happening all the time in a lot of other places in the world. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that that's what uh, now am I going to refuse to go on a subway because uh, or get on an airplane? Right, no, you can't. Yeah, then the terrorists have won. Well, right? you, you but, lost me when you said not a lot of people want to blow us up. I think that's true. In not, absolute, a people, in, not a lot of people. Not a lot of people numbers. who can get here. Who can get here? Yeah, but certainly there's, there's got to be intent. tens of millions at least yeah, that would love to see us blow up. Yeah, but are they going to do it? Are they uh, going to do that's it? That's question. what I mean. They're so mostly they're lazy, it turns out. And they're stupid. This yeah. guy with the truck in Times Square a couple a few years ago, who, you know, the bomb didn't go off. I, mean, I, I just wish they would talk more honestly about it. I was taken on on New Year's Eve that the city of New York spent. I think my said this. They spent. Yeah. Mm-hmm millions of dollars to barricade the Times Square mm-hmm. uh, against trucks driving in like at the German Christmas market. Obviously, they're afraid of exactly what it is sure. they're telling us we're not supposed to be afraid of. Well, you're not supposed to be afraid of it because we've got these hundreds of cops right. lined up to prevent But then, like, happening. the Nichols Christoph will say, well, the, the biggest threat to uh, life is, is married men or something like that. Well, yeah, maybe because we're spending millions <laughs> and millions of dollars to barricade Times Square then we can say that, well, married men kill more people than terrorists. Nicholas, can you really say that? Let, let me ask you something. Do you think, do you think they, do, they, they did this in Times Square because they're scared or because they want to say we did what we there had you to? No, you, know? I, well, so, you guys are the experts. I think they're scared. You guys? Like, it, I think it's a lot of, I call it counterterrorism theater. We put a lot of checkpoints exactly. in place and we do a lot of screening and we run your bag through a thing. While the person chews gum and smokes a cigarette, and like you might have a bomb in there, we don't really yeah. know. But you know what? It 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 it, it, less, it, it it's it 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 raises the odds against. Them. Let's say I'm I'm carrying a bomb into an airport, okay? And yeah, there are these studies which showed well they've done simulations. Agents have gone through. Seventy percent of the time they don't see this guy. Well, thirty percent of the time they do. And if I'm walking in there and I'm on a mission, that thirty percent. That, that's high. That's a high percentage for somebody actually trying to do it. So I think it is it is a deterrent, even though they don't catch everything. Uh, there, there's and part always, of it is theater, but, but yeah. you know. There's I, always two blind spots, though. I agree with Fred. Go ahead. In, the, in these scenarios <clears throat> and, and the things that I worry about. One, we always prepare for the thing that we've seen before. So we've seen a 9-11 attack. We've seen a bomb on a plane. Shoes. We've We've seen people drive through. We've seen shooters. Mm-hmm. So we prepare for those sort of things. Um, the other thing is we always calculate on sort of an actor either doing what we've seen before or being rational. And so if you look at, let's say, the World Trade Center getting knocked down, 
Russia wasn't going to do that. A nation state's not going to do that. China's not going to fly a plane in there. They're not going to blow up an attack on the U.S. So if you want to look at what really gets people shook, the one thing that was most fascinating to me in all recent years was Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy, we had literally the New York City metropolitan area absolutely freaking out. We had runs on ATMs and banks. We had people uh, in line for gas like it was the 1970s. Uh, we're talking about a week. People were losing their minds for not having Wi-Fi or gas. If you want to create uh, the walking dead, that scenario is not going to be a nation state. That's a provocation for war. We're talking about nuclear missiles or military shooting at each other. It's a it's always a hacker or a non-state actor. It's somebody that you don't anticipate or you don't calculate for doing something that you haven't well, seen before. Can I say, I think you're right. And, and there's in the modern world, there's an infinite number of ways to use technology yeah. to do something terrible to a lot of ways that you know we haven't even given any thought to, right? I think, so what's the constant? The constant is people coming from other countries, Muslims, whatever. The, it's an amazing credit to this country yeah. that there's not 80% of the country wants to ban Muslims when you think about it. I mean, no, no, mm -hmm. like you, 100 years ago, it'd be like, yeah. listen, we have no other way. Nothing else. The only thing, like I always say about the Samsung phone, 17 out of a million blow up, get rid of all, recall all the phones, right? You do. That, there's a logic to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's quite an, a great country that doesn't just immediately adopt that logic. About, but also, without, well, Donald Trump has adopted that. Well, no, logic, and, right? and, and yeah. but I'm saying, and I guess what I'm saying is that his logic is not ridiculous. It's just right. compromises, I guess, who we want to be. And it gets more people. We become but, post, uh, but at a some poster point, child for uh, Al Qaeda and everything if, else. If, yeah. I'd say if, I mean, t people die, 9 11, 3,000 people. If another 6,000 people were to die, we would adopt that logic and, yeah. and we might have no, no right. choice, you know, we just, we, we just wait. And, and that's been my only objection. Oh, Stephen wants to ask questions all along is that I think these issues well, are I, really I just, hard. And the, the I just want to say one thing the before, the bigotry yeah, before, or, before right. you ask a question is yeah. like, I think people realize also when you say you want to ban Muslims, uh, that a lot of the success in like, say, catching some land, all this was with the help of mm -hmm. Muslims. That's so right. if you didn't get it, you would never have got, Osama, I know Osama Milan doesn't really matter. He's just a simple whatever, you know. But I'm saying, like, the war in terrorists, like, the people in charge knows that Muslims are important in the fight, you know. So that's why they keep having them. That's you know? their, a that's... great example, two allies, Jordan and Israel. I, I mean, uh, Israel is more overt and, and more out in front about being our ally. Jordan has been under the surface, an incredible ally for us in the war on terror. And an ally to Israel quite often. Yeah, oftentimes. And so, like, those alliances right now, I think, are highly confused I, I, on both sides. Because in the Israel scenario, it was, go ahead, build settlements. Okay, don't build settlements. Like, they've been jerked back and forth in just, like, the last 60 days. I think for Jordan, if you notice some of the rhetoric around moving the embassy in this, I would almost guarantee you behind the scenes Jordan was like, hey, I don't know if you realize this, but you need to cut the shit because there's a lot of Al-Qaeda ISIS dudes that are going to be suicide bombing this entire region. I, I think you know, not based just on Jordan. I, I, have a, yeah. I, I don't know this for a fact, but I wouldn't be surprised if Israelis actually told Trump, yeah. you know, I know we talk about this a lot, but it really would be a bad idea if you did this because we'd be we have these nice alliances. Thanks now. for the token with, talk, with, with but Saudi let's calm Arabia, it down. Yeah. Egypt, it's we, just we, Republican consumption. Fact, we Israel, don't really want Israel's it. security right now yeah. is is better than it has been in ages. Ever, yeah. all of their all their old all their old enemies are fighting each other. Yeah, they're now on the side with all the Sunnis against the Iran. Yeah. You know, since that don't, this don't, podcast don't mess this started, up. Don't mess I agree this with up. you, Stephen. You want to ask your question? Wait, yeah, sure. Uh, it's just a quick question. So this could relate to the Russia issue. This could relate to foreign policy in general. I'm curious what you think of the degree to which. Congress and the judicial branch have advocated and relinquished their ability to serve as a check on the president and how you think that will play out during the Trump administration? Well, Congress, uh, here's what's going on with the Republicans in Congress. I mean, a lot of them are <laughs> panicked. A lot of them are what? <laughs> panicked. Panicked. They see like, oh, Jesus, what is this guy going to do and what is he going to do to us? But in the meantime, He's going to pass a lot of their agenda, and Hillary wasn't going to do that, and Obama wasn't doing that, so he's going to do our agenda. And hey, in the meantime, he's got some base out there. He's getting us elected. The people in their districts, they think he's doing a great job. And so, and if we get in his way, oh, Jesus, he's going to throw a, a primary challenger at me. 
uh, or he's going to take federal funds away from me, mm. from my district. So let's go with him, and let's go with him unanimously because it's a, it's good right now, and he's going to really mess with us if we go against him. Do you believe it when it comes from Fred? But, I, but <laughs> yeah, I'm the. I told you the exact same no, thing. But, but, there, but there's a however here. There's a however. Uh, if let's say a year or two from now, if the factories jobs aren't coming back, if the infrastructure projects aren't being built, if the wall, the, if the wall is running into imminent domain problems, <laughs> you know, maybe um, who would have saw if, that coming? It's complicated. Yeah, if all oh, yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> it's well, complicated. Who knew? Nobody knew. Come and do. I remember one time Trump said, well, "It's a wall." Just hire I mean, a fencer. A It'll it's come like, in and fix it. It's, it's not like building restrooms. That's where you get into the trouble. It's just a wall. <laughs> right. So uh, if he runs into these problems, if 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 he does institute some of these trade things. And, and, you know, your iPhone all of a sudden costs $800 or whatever. Then people are going to be saying, wait, what the hell is going on here? This isn't what I was going for. And then, you know, fear, fear is a great way to rule for a while. But, but if, the, if a crack forms, it can shatter pretty easily. So, and in the meantime, really, and I, I'm saying this with some knowledge, some of these people who are, you know, applauding him and this is great, they're holding their breath and hoping that some world crisis doesn't happen mm-hmm. in yeah. the meantime before people become disillusioned with the guy. Absolutely, yeah. they have to be. They're not. They're not crazy. They yeah. have. They have absolutely because be. they know this guy. You know, he is both a not very smart, b completely ignorant of everything in the world. C has no intellectual curiosity at all. I mean, he's now getting the intelligence briefs because Flynn isn't there anymore. He gave an instruction. Okay, I don't want it to deal with more than three topics, one page per topic, and I don't want to know about dissents. I don't okay. want to know about dissents. That's right. I just want, I want the bottom line. I yeah. want, so in other words, there's no way of knowing, okay, X is happening. But is, is this something that all the 17 intelligence agencies agree with or do five of them disagree with this thing and the president needs to know about that that dissent creates a huge problem because just like we saw yesterday when things don't go wrong right he's immediately wants to lay blame on somebody he you know he said my generals who are the best generals ever by the way told the me to do this generals as obama's generals, right the same as right? obama's yeah. generals uh told me to do this and you know uh if it went wrong you know it's because they told me and so he's he's powering down in one sense but that's also abdicating responsibility and the Government bureaucrats will pick on, the, on that real quick and be like, I'm not going to recommend anything that's going to put my name on yeah, it for a long I, time. I said, I said it before, I said it again. I just want him to cut my taxes and leave. <laughs> <laughs> is, that's, that's, <laughs> is, there, is there anything about the, the cyber world? We have like, are you going to see the show? What show? The comedy show? Didn't we have reservations? Uh, for no, I don't have, I think I can tonight. Oh, uh, you can't? Okay, so then we have a few more minutes. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you guys I, are both into cyber. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> no, because oh. you, you know, better than I, you, you can answer better that than better than me well, trying what's to. What's your question? There's some, you know. Wait, what, what's the hot topic? Like, what should we know about in the cyber world? Well, okay, I'll tell you something that isn't quite well understood because everybody knows at least a little bit about hacking. The Internet of Things, you know, about you know what I'm talking about, right? Your, your refrigerator, your everything stove. is networked. Okay, everything is networked, and this is cool because you can, you know, you can. You know, something it's put on an alert to fresh direct that you're out of oh, milk. I could start know. my car from yeah, my that's from right. here. Okay, mm-hmm. but here's the problem. Here's a problem that has only recently been discovered. It's not just that somebody could hack into your refrigerator and mess with your house. It's that there are this has been done. There are bad guys out there, bad hombres. Who I sound like Trump? Well, he, it, first of all, well the, these things these are computers. Yeah. They have passwords, they have operating systems. There's no user interface, so you don't know what's going on. And the passwords tend to be like password or one, two, three, four, five. And there's not even an easy way for you to reset the password, but there they are. So there are programs that send out, they're looking for like 60 passwords and all of these internet of things devices conform mm-hmm. to them. So there are guys who like glom onto this. So they've got 100,000 devices that they're hacking into at once, or 10 million, or 50 million. And with the push of a button, they can have all of these devices send a signal to one thing, overload it, and crash it. So in other words, we have in our houses bots for a cyber attack from somebody that you don't even know what it is, and it's hard to trace this, who's doing it. There was a thing that happened four months ago, just as an experiment, because they didn't go after anybody seriously, 
they shut down, you know, Netflix, Spotify, and a few things like that for about four hours. Now, it was Netflix and Spotify. It could have been Con Ed. It could have been whatever. And that is, and we are, so we are creating and things yesterday, in Yesterday, Amazon Web houses. Services were yeah. down. Yeah. Okay. We, we are creating things that are in our own houses, mm. which are being recruited as the slaves in a cyber war attack on what could be very critical That's a great idea. I've been, I've been going for... Uh, let, me, well, let me call my people. I've been, <laughs> I've been going for three months now trying to develop a strategy of redundancy for the Comedy Solar website. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the smartest guys told me, well, you should take two AWS, Amazon Web Server cloud things and sing them. I'm like, I don't know. And, and yes, vulnerable. Yes, yeah, your own I said, I want a, I finally, I said, I know I want a the dedicated hardware server in one, uh, in one provider. And then yeah. the, and one yeah. Amazon cloud and let them, let it write between them, uh, you know, using MySQL all the time. But I'm, I'm constantly, for, you know, if, if they, if they put down my, my website, I'm in, so there's, there's, yeah, still time, I mean, there's still yeah. time out in New York. They, they still no, show up. They're really, it's literally Ticket my entire services, business. Yeah. Yeah. Is that really? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm, the phones, I guess, but yeah, we're not set up for that. It's scary. So yeah, what else? What, what's, I, what's on so your my, mind? My cyber thing would be uh, IoT, Internet of Things is a huge deal. But I, I think the other thing is the geopolitical implica implications of cyber. I'll give you an example. When our president is up late at night on Saturday night tweeting – and shooting off comments about Iran, China, you pick your nation. The American uh, private and public sectors immediately take a beating the next week. It is uh, invisible to most people, but banks, uh, public infrastructure, power, energy, uh, Amazon, whatever it might be, if you're an American company, when your president goes and says, ah, I want to go into South China Sea because it's a great idea. I met with Taiwan. Uh, Iran sucks, X, Y, and Z. That tweet results in massive cyber attacks, denial of service, uh, hacking attempts, whatever it might be from the Iranian cyber armies, Chinese cyber armies, uh, working in terms of espionage. And those have consequences for the private sector. And I don't think the president really understands that. And I don't think customers of these uh, organizations understand it, and the U.S. government cannot protect you. I have been attacked by a foreign nation state on my own emails, on my own infrastructure, because I wrote about Russia. I commented on them influencing and trying to appear as Americans in 2015. Two weeks later, I got a notification from the FBI that I've been hit with malware. So what the implications of our cyber are not well understood. For is this is this are these growing pains for a civilization or is this sure permanent? No, it's exactly what I would do if I were them. If I can't meet the U.S. militarily or economically, whenever you you know shoot my face over the Iran nuclear deal, I'm going to cyber. No, but I mean, will, will we eventually develop the kind of the, the technologies that we will this will not we won't be vulnerable know. to this stuff anymore? You know, when they when they made it all know. anonymous. That was kind of the original sin. Can I? Mm. Do we have time for me to tell you we one story? All the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in 1967, when the ARPANET was about to go up, this was the progen. This was the, the predecessor to the internet. Uh, there was there was one scientist. There was a guy. He was the head of the computer science division at the Rand Corporation, named Willis Ware. This was at a time when this is in your was, book. It's in my book. Yeah. Okay. So. He, he writes a memo. It was secret at the time. It's been declassified. And he says, look, you know, here's the thing. Uh, this is a good idea, but you should know that once you put information on a network where you have access from online from multiple users in unsecured locations, you're creating inherent vulnerabilities. You won't be able to keep secrets anymore. So when I was doing research for my book, I asked the guy who was in charge of ARPA at the time, you know, did you read the, well, oh, yeah, I knew Willis. Well, what'd you do? He goes, well, I showed it to the team, and they looked at it, and they said, oh, Jesus, you know, don't don't saddle us with a security Can I tell you what I remember? They said the threat is 20 years in the future in the other countries, and, right? And, yeah, that, and and also, look, look how hard it was just to do what we've done. This is, it's like asking the Wright brothers that the first plane should carry 50 passengers for 100 mm. miles. Yeah. And that was it. So it did happen. It did take a couple decades for a threat to materialize. By the time it did, whole systems, whole networks had grown up that are completely vulnerable. And there was a Defense Science Board study in 2013 talking about defense networks, which referred to the inherent fragility of our architecture. The inherent. 
So yeah, you can do an arms race thing and you can get better luck. What I tell people is look, yeah, like I mean, if, if what you're worried about is somebody hacking into your bank account or Netflix or whatever, there are things you can do because most 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 of these guys they're like the hotel burglar. You know, they're, they're checking to see if if doors are open. If it's locked, they'll move on to the next door. But you know, if a nation state or somebody with those resources and and willpower, but if they if you if you have something that they want and they want to get into your shit. They're gonna get. It. They're gonna they're, get. There's it, very little that you. Yeah, can that's do why about. maybe you shouldn't care. You know, like, you know. Well, well they, you, you, you should know there. Like on my phone, yeah. there are lots of things that I don't have on my phone. Yeah, like what? Like almost everything. I use it as a phone and some email. All my contacts and records and th- I don't, everything that's on my laptop is not on my. It's phone. Not, yeah. yeah. I have two questions. It's about quick, data. Two questions. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have two quick questions. And your last article is late. You know, money for nothing. I think it's. Yeah amazing my question is uh, so uh, you talk about uh, you know all uh, the the money that uh, trump wants to um, increase for the defense yeah. where is that money going could it be could he be smart and doing it for cyber attacks you think no that doesn't no cost way. that much right? it doesn't cost that much it's, it's just well, a fat guy it's not going to happen it's not going to happen so where is this money going it's no, no, so from, much from money thing, it, it, he's not going to get a 10% increase for defense no way no way look it's 50 billion dollars the, the 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 a lot of the departments that he wants to take the money from they barely have 50 billion dollars to begin total. with yeah. you, you total you'd have to like you know you'd have, you'd have to get rid of the state department you know it, it's it's it, it all this does have to pass congress uh-huh. and uh and, you know, I mean, General Mattis, when he was CENTCOM commander, he testified before Congress once. He said, look, uh, you've got to fully fund the State Department because if you don't, you, you'd better buy me more ammunition because I'm going to need it right away. Yeah. Okay. But with Trump, just get it through your head. Whatever he asks for is intentionally much more than he ever thinks he's going to get. That is the way he operates. Yeah. It's, it's, Deal it's the making. real estate yep. thing. He's, he's asked for 60, hoping to get 30, whatever it is, you know. Uh I, I, I believe that's what it is with every, almost all no, the outrageous all presidents do that, but but he wants to get rid of like the EPA, but that's what, yeah. the State Department, and all this. Yeah, so yeah no, I agree. The direction it, of it is is you know so fa- my my second question: Facebook, Instagram, all yeah. Twitter, I all use, this. I don't use them. No, I know, but do you, you is, should you should use face, Facebook is awesome. I, by I the have way. an author's Facebook page. But, an author, yeah, but it, not it, It's really it's a pleasure. I don't know if you have old friends. I really enjoy seeing. It sounds corny, but like baby pictures of my friends, and so it's. I really enjoy it. Uh, I mean, yeah. cats. I right? live cats. I mean, how many cats. I live without it. See? I, I, I am able to reason. keep with socially with people that I wouldn't, and I I kind of value that. But go ahead. No, I think I think it's a great. But do you, do you, is it is it you know I have to ask this question because. Um, this is very well known in the, in the Middle East, and you know that is is it controlled by the co- government? It's is it a government a, project? No, I know it's not, but could no. it be? Facebook? Yeah, no. could it be? It's what? Good, for one thing, it'd be, it'd be so fucked up if it were, right? Yeah. How, how could the government too, I mean, run show? It works Facebook? way too well for it to be yeah, run by the government. That's only Republican. I mean, it would it, it, it would crash all the it time. Would all the it time. would load someone else's pictures when you loaded yours. Unless the NSA, it would be a disaster. if the NSA were running it, then it might. Be but this, you can take the Arab the, out of the Middle East, but you can't take the Middle East out. Uh, he, he, no, the reason he I'm sees asking. conspiracies everywhere. He asked me seriously today if Anne Frank really happened. I'm like, <laughs> what? He is maybe just got back from. <laughs> was it Amsterdam? I I went to Anne Frank House. I I I, I of course I believe it happened. The, was mu- that, the was museum. Was it the first thing you did? Was it was it the first thing you did in Amsterdam, or something much later after, like late at night? You know, no, maybe it's, stopped it, off. It at looked some like places. an inside job. Didn't right. it? <laughs> I mean, you enjoyed some it was, of Amsterdam before it you got the there. It was the second the second day. But I, the reason right. I'm asking you this because you know. Uh, we have a lot of listeners, and I, I got to show you the country that listens to us. It's crazy. Okay. So anyway, uh, during the Arabic Spring, you know, there was a lot of um, people really were talking. Well. Yeah, and that Facebook was kind of like organizing the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? But people that wanted to, um, there was some pages that was put to um, uh, for the, all the leaders, Mubarak and stuff like that, that was taken down. You know, and they took it down. That's all. So my, that that what that's why I'm. I mean, asking do you think the government? It's, 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 no, I don't no. think. I'm just it, asking. No, no, but they're they aren't they aren't this smart. They are this organized. You Wouldn't know, that be well, let me ask a related but, question. But, but, because, uh, the, there is an there is is there not a, an antitrust issue with Facebook? I there mean, the, theoretically, the government could say could could I don't know what they could do. I mean, that. it would be brilliant if the if that's a government weapon. Don't you think? I mean. 
You know. Well, I mean, look, if they want to hack into Facebook or they can go look at it themselves, what are they going to do? Well, if they did run Facebook, what's their advantage in doing it? What, what are they getting let, out let of it? Let me ask the last question. Let's have there you we go. In, in, no, in the cons- in, in conspiracy theories, you know, because I always dismiss them, but you guys know about history. What is the best example that we know of of a real conspiracy that actually was they able they managed to keep it a secret and pull it off because well, I tend that, to think that, there's none. You want, a you thousand want. years of Russian history. The reason why Russians are so enamored of conspiracy theories is that their entire history has been one conspiracy. No, but I mean, in, so in you're asking about you asking about. Oh, no, I'm, I'm saying, in, 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 is, is there any well, example where like 20 people have to know about something and no, and they just all well, kept quiet? Example, well, the Holocaust. Well, Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but they, that was way too the, easy. Uh, no. the CIA, CIA involvement in, in, the, in the coup in Chile. In Chile. I mean, if, for oh. example, it's just fine. I knew a guy at the time who was the State Department's Chile desk officer. And he's reading these stories by Seymour Hersh in the New York Times that say the CIA and Henry Kissinger, they're all involved in the. And he's saying, this is just bullshit. I would have known about this, and I, nothing came across. Well, it turned out it was true, but he didn't know about it. You know, they bypassed. The but State Seymour Department. Hersh wrote about it, yeah, but so no, somebody but it squealed. Tr- it was true, but I mean, it didn't go through the State Department. That was a conspiracy. It was. But it, how long but did it, it last? But they didn't keep it a secret. Well, they they they, they did the coup. This was after the coup happened. You know? Well, you know, you can hold it for a, a short period of time to. To to um to do something specific. Well, you're asking about a conspiracy that we don't know about. Right? No, and, well, well that came out. You know, thirty years, 30 later, years it later, it came out. Actually, Lyndon Johnson did kill President Kennedy and everybody. <laughs> I, I'm just yeah, saying, right. I, I I just dismiss a lot because I feel like people yeah. can't keep quiet. But go ahead. Right. for a U.S. government conspiracy yeah. theory to end up being true, there are a few prereq- prerequisites. One, it's got to be tactical. It can't be strategic. So this isn't like explain I'm, the difference. I'm going to overtake Australia or something grandiose. Probably not going to happen, but I'm going to do a targeted campaign on somebody in Chile or a very specific point. You can maybe do it. Here's why it has to be that way. One, just like you said, it has to be a very narrow group of people that are aware of it, and they have to be highly coordinated. This is the opposite of the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. It's usually tons of people involved. They're all in each other's way. No one's on board. As soon as you start to move forward, whether it's healthcare or anything, someone's ratting you out or dumping leaks or whatever. So look at the bin Laden raid as an example. It's not a conspiracy, but of something that worked. Why did it work? No one knew about it. It happened. There were 50 people that were aware of it when it was happening. They went and killed him. They came back and it was over. And and literally President Obama walked down and said, hey, it's over. It's done. That worked because we didn't have a ton of people involved. It was very narrow. We knew what the objective was. And Seymour Hersh thought that was a conspiracy, right? Here. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's, that's Seymour Hersh now. Like, but, to, <laughs> Hirsch, for, I read now. that. I'm like, what the hell is with but this guy? But for a government <laughs> to pull it off, let's take a one that didn't work. Uh, you know, I'm, t- I'm talking true stories. Stuxnet, for example. It they designed this. It worked for a while, but what happened? They also shared it with the Israelis. It sounded you like can't trust and the Israelis. No. And then get I'm trying to be quiet. Well, what and about people started uh, talking? And uh, yeah, you I didn't see that it. documentary, but I heard that so the Israelis. What, what, the what about, a government conspiracy be true? It's got to be small well, they, enough they and tactical. What about D Day, where they tried to? You know, there was a lot of people, I guess, that knew they were landing over here, but. You can do feints. You can do, you know, uh, you know, that's measures. What he means by no, but that's not a conspiracy. That's that's not, no, that's a just a lot of people. That's, that's, that's just a lot of people. That's just a lot of people that can, didn't talk for a period of time. That's a that's secret that, military operation. I, I'm just There's imagining like Donald Trump yeah. being a, a Manchurian president right. or, or, or something less. And that's no, something I don't like, think too many people really believe that. Yeah, I, I feel like it's going to come out. It's got to come out. I feel. Can I say something? Aren't we better off if he was controlled by Russia? Yeah, At hey, least somebody's oh, controlling oh, I do have this question. You're I, not entirely wrong. Yeah, some I mean, you be a more rational I know. Some status quo power what he's is doing. controlling. That's right. I, I, actually, I do he, have, will I, make, he will make sense. I do have a real question about Russia. I don't know if you have time for it. Do you have time hey, for it? I, whatever, I, because I, I keep going. I, I've been, this, this keeps frustrating me. And I see McCain and Lindsey Graham out there blasting Russia. It seems to me, and I'm not educated about this, but this is, this is what I think about it, that just like we had our Monroe Doctrine, there is no way Russia was going to let us take over, uh, the West take over Ukraine, especially Crimea. Well, but the way, wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, hold just, just let me, just let me finish. The premise is a little... Just let me finish. All right. They took Crimea. There is no way ever they're going to give it back. It's done. They set nothing. They, they regard this in their fundamental national interest. Mm-hmm. It's always been Russian. It's Russian people. So if we take as a given 
they're never going to give it back. Then what is our end game well, here? That's that's a good question because I think just there, permanent there, there, animosity. No, no, you know, I think this is bad. I mean, I mean, I I I am agreeing with Trump on only one part of one thing that he said, which is that look, the United States and Russia do have some converging interests on some vital issues. For example, the Russians have never been keen on letting anybody else have nuclear weapons. Even during the Cold War, they never let their Warsaw Pact allies touch this stuff. You know, they, they confiscated all the uranium that was in East Germany and Czechoslovakia. So we are, we are like this, and still are, by the way, on programs to, to keep other people from getting nuclear materials and that kind of thing. Terrorism. They've got a, a big Islamic terrorism problem on their southern border. Huge. They uh, And we used to cooperate quite heavily on this stuff. Uh, we still cooperate a little bit, but kind of on a mid to lower level. Uh, I think it, the idea that, that we're in a new Cold War and that Russia is flexing, this is bullshit. Russia, I mean, this is not a strong country. Their economy is in the, is in the tank. Nobody wants to adopt their system. Nobody wants to join their alliance. Militarily, what have they got? They've got a they've got a, a little strip of eastern Ukraine and Syria, which they've had for a long time, which is their only military outpost outside the former Soviet Union. What Putin is very clever at is turning is is exploiting the strengths that he does have. He maximizes. I mean, like cyber information warfare. These are things that he can control because they don't have an independent press. They don't have other countering things. And he's brilliant at this kind of thing. But it's not based on anything. And the fact that we're getting all bent out of shape. And, and I, you know, look, in terms of Crimea, it's true. For, from, it's, it's basically Russians living in Crimea. In 1954, Khrushchev gave Crimea to the Ukrainians. Ceremonially. As a present. It was bullshit because it was all run by Russia to begin with. Right. Then again... You know, we signed a few agreements saying one thing that we said about Ukraine to Ukraine in the, in the early 90s was give up your nuclear weapons because there were some Russian nuclear weapons that were in Ukraine. And when it fell apart, they were theirs. No, and we said, I, I, and we said get rid of your nuclear weapons and we'll, we'll protect and your we'll protect territorial you. integrity. Look, if, right. if, it, if there was go before an, an, arbit, uh, an impartial decider, I think the, but, they yeah. would have to leave. But, but they're never going to leave. So doesn't an American president have to say, listen, we they're never going to leave. Let's, we're going to have to make some accommodation. Let's get as much as I we think, can in return and make a deal and be done with this. I, th I, think, permanent I think ultimately that if, if, if we are to not have this ridiculous hostility between us anymore, uh, I think something like that ultimately will have to happen. At the same time, you know, they can't be messing around in our elections no, and no. stuff like this. And, you know, then they're they are now not in any consequential way, but they're they're in violation of a lot of arms control agreements right now. I mean, it doesn't really affect the military balance, but you kind of can't just let that slide either. No, I'm not suggesting the yeah. deal. I'm just suggesting no, that, no. that I, Trump I think, is not evil for saying, listen, we should try to make some kind of deal and and But, but and, here's and the main thing about that. The, the, your goal, it is, not, it is not a strategy or a goal in foreign policy to say, my goal is to get along. No, your goal is to pursue your interests. And if, if part of satisfying your interest is getting along with this guy, that's cool. But yeah. just getting along, that, that, that's, that doesn't mean anything. Well, we're never going to get him to stop hacking in our elections and doing everything well, I you think, can. No, I think in, you can in, do that. Yeah, I definitely think you can. I, not without some kind of deal, I don't think well, so. Or, or coercion. Or retaliation. retaliation. Or retaliation. But, I mean, it's going to escalate. The, the ideal thing would be, get, would, would be make up. I, I think it's in everybody's interest. That's. I mean, during the Cold War, I mean, really, Cold War missiles aimed at each other, tanks facing us across the borders. You know, we signed a bunch of arms reduction treaties. We had all kinds of things going on. There were there, there were areas where we had converging, not necessarily identical, but converging interests where deals were made. There was diplomacy, and it worked. Were, and and yeah, yeah, yeah. Without yeah. without a, without. But fun, Rush But it didn't. But he but The fundamental nature of the relationship. Russia is not going to respond to anything except for meeting them, stopping them, or retaliation. So the idea that uh, – and this is where I think Obama was extremely weak with Russia – was let's just talk about things and we'll work out a solution and we'll get along. No. If I am Russia and I am Putin, I need to expand. I, know, I need to show nationalism. I need to be positive. I need to be aggressive. 
that's exactly what he's doing right now, and his people love him for it, even if they're weak economically. And we see this in our own company. That's what makes country. It's what makes Trump highly successful. He says, "I'm doing great. I'm moving forward. I'm advancing." So, with Russia, whether it's Estonia, uh, any of the former Eastern Bloc countries, Ukraine, eventually we'll have to meet them. Russia's goal is to dismantle the EU and dismantle NATO. They see that That's as an thing. affront to their essential sovereignty and their interest. And until we sort of buttress that and reaffirm those alliances or provide assurance to partners, they will break up these unions and go one-to-one -one with every country. Uh, I agree completely with I, that. Their I, whole point in doing a lot of this stuff, and they're doing it with the German elections now, yeah. is to break up the EU, break up Western unity, so that they can do what they want to do in the Baltics and the Ukraine. I mean, it's the Putin's strategy goal. in the U.S. with I'm the just, electorate. I'm yeah. just searching for somebody. I know you, you hate Kissinger, but just something I'd imagine, like a Kissinger, who somebody has some vision of what the end game is. What are we working towards? That's the problem. And when I hear people not, like McCain and Graham, like, okay, keep these sanctions and you, Russia's out of, Russia out of Crimea. Russia's not leaving Crimea. We have no strategy. No strategy. No, no thing. goal. The Trump administration. And that's dangerous. And even Congress now right. is a series of tactical actions and random policies thrown together with no end state. Yeah. And until the U.S. decides what we want, we'll never get what we Trump want. Trump thinks he can do bilateral deals with every country. Yeah. It's like a real estate thing. <laughs> All right. Gentlemen, I'm so honored to have no, you guys. This was fun. This was, was great. It was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank and and I, just one thing, you see, hacking in an election, this is one thing never happens in the Middle East. we much better. <laughs> you, just go, you just go straight hey! for the ballot box. You just go straight for the ballot box. Thank you. We see, won by 99%. They don't have a vote. ballot box. We are better, we are better than you. <laughs> and let's, let's vote. Polls open at 9. 99% <laughs> is voted for our great leader. We already know that. Yeah. That's right. So uh, would you like to share your Twitter for our listener? Or, um, it's somebody? at FM. Kaplan, that's my Twitter. Great, I am cool. at Selected Wisdom, which is a broken <laughs> website, but yes, Selected Wisdom, Mr. Dan Natterman. I'm at Dan Natterman. You are. Oh, at Clint, Dan you should. I don't know if you read his book. You should really read his book. We were, we were just talking about it right before that. It's really so, good. Yeah. It's really for those good. who don't want to buy a hardcover, it's in paperback. I, I was waiting for paperback. It's, I found it's out, coming out so. in a few weeks. Well, I assume it's in also uh, electronic version. It is. Uh, it's in all. It's even a uh, kind of a boring oral. I didn't. I didn't read it myself. But I, there, there is, there is a CD. There, there is Actually, a book on I, I Tell will, me about these electronic uh, books. Well, I'm joking. <laughs> I will, I will buy, I'll buy. I'd like to buy everybody a copy. Who wants a copy? You want a copy? I, I, I have, have one. one. You have one. I, have, I, I would I like the French version if one, you have it. One, two, three. Will you, will you sign <laughs> it? For, will you sign it for Stephen? Pardon, did it, has it been sure. translated uh, one, into two, any other three. languages? Okay, coming you know, up. Zeros and ones. These it's kinds of books book. don't do it's well all in zeros and ones. Thank God, Francis. Thank you, everybody. It's a great episode. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You were listening to Live from America podcast. To contact us, please go to www.